time between time storytelling. It's a strange night tonight. I have not seen a fog like this for many years. I have just returned from a winding walk in the woods and I could barely see any of it. I know where all the trees, the nooks, the craggies, the caves are. And I could see none of them. All I could see were shadows and shadows, shadows. And there at the corner of vision, almost on the edge of reality itself, figures moved, darting from tree to tree, from bush to bush. And it reminds me of an old tale that is told here in the Vale of Neath, a tale that I will tell you right now. Welcome to Time Between Times Storytelling with me, Owen Staten. Before we go any further, but know this, my friends, tomorrow is the solstice, the 21st. This is the dark heart of the year, the darkest part of the year. This is where the sun is barely seen, and then for only an hour a day, if that. Here we are in perpetual darkness, but we know that this is where tales are told. On the 23rd, two days before Christmas, at 7pm British time, I will be doing a live show right here at the Time Between Times on YouTube. Please join me. I will answer questions. I will tell tales that are good on Christmas nights, that we tell ghost stories, strange stories. You are welcome to join me. I will most like to see you. But anyway, in the meantime, sit back, relax, and join me at the time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. The time when the veil between our world and the fairy world is wafer, wafer thin. So thin that for a few moments we can reach into their realm, and for a few moments they can reach into ours. Now is the time that people see ghosts. Now is the time that people see lights in the sky. Now is the time of the Tulwyd Tag. Now is the time between times. And let me take you to a time 200 years ago. In a small cottage in the Neath Valley. Poor with, and with holes in its roof and water running down its walls. There taking her final breaths was an old witch called Nellie Pugh. Her death had been long and agonising, and her friends had left her by the dying fire, the spirit of the fire ebbing away just like Nellie's spirit. They left her in the dark, for that is what she wanted. She had spoken her last. She had held the hands of her friends, and they sat outside the door, just listening to her taking her final breaths. A mist fell just like it is tonight, and all was quiet. But they waited until the morning, till the weak sun started to rise over the mountain, to that pallid light that shines in the winter heart. And there they opened the door and walked in to take Nellie's body away. But they saw something they did not expect. For something had happened to Nellie during the night. All around her neck were bites. And these weren't the bites of small animals. These were the big bites. Maybe a human or something more. On her arms, on her legs, on her neck. They were covered. And her body had been drained of blood. Horrified. They put her in a box. She was known as a witch and was not welcome in the churchyard, so they carried her up the side of the mountain, scrambling up the mountain slopes, till they found a place to bury her. They lowered the rickety coffin into the ground. And there on the edge of vision, at the side of the hill, they saw something looking at them. It was tall, it was thin, had a slight stoop and long gangling arms and claw-like hands but its face looked exactly like Nellie's. It turned 
walked away into the shadows. Two months later, a miner named David Lewin was walking nearby. David tripped and fell, tumbled down a hillside, and lay at the bottom, his leg horribly broken. His friend, who was with him at the time, called down that he would go for help. But when he returned an hour later, David, who seemed well enough for a man with a broken leg, was as pale as a sheet, and his heart had stopped beating. Again, his neck was covered in bites. Three days after he died, he was reportedly seen wandering the woodland, taller than usual, more stooped than usual, paler than usual, but with the same face. People have often talked about this creature that wanders the Vale of Mead. It seems like something that takes the soul of those who are near death and lives on the number of years that it, that they had been given. For there is another sighting, not so long ago, where someone was killed in a nasty crash. They walked away, even though their body remained in the car, quiet, pale, gone. But two days later, they were seen wandering the wood, tall and stooped and pale, but with their face, undoubtedly. What this creature is, none can tell, but all that know that it wanders the woodland when the mist falls like a blanket, at the heart of midwinter, for it is never seen in the sun, and though many tales of vampires, many films of vampires are shown, only here in Wales, these creatures perhaps still wandering amongst us. I wonder if there's anything more about this. When I walked outside earlier, just on the edge of vision, I thought I saw something gliding amongst the trees, something tall, something stooped, and with a very familiar face face of someone I have not seen for a long, long time. It terrified me. My friends, midwinter is a time for ghost stories, is it not? So this one I have told to you. Be careful when you step outside. Be careful where you go on nights such as this, for who knows wanders among the fog. These creatures that live just on the edge of vision emerge at the time between times. I hope they will not be seen again tonight. Thank you, my friends, for joining me here to listen to this short tale that I tell you before the solstice comes, before the light begins to return. Join me again next week for another Time Between Times video. I've also released a mindful listen on the podcast, something to take your mind away from those things that worry you and take your imagination somewhere where you go to help you relax. Thank you for all your support this year. It has been fantastic to see our numbers grow. Thank you for joining me here at the Time Between Times and join me again on this Thursday at 7pm. If you wish to support the channel, please go to ko-fi.com ko forward slash Owen Staten. And there is much Time Between Times merchandise. Or perhaps you can buy me a coffee. The merchandise is on Teespring. Owen Staten. I shall put a link below if you want a Time Between Times t-shirt or mug. Again, you will be supporting me and telling tales to you at 
the time between times. The time it is neither night nor day, but the sun is gone and the sky is grey. I will hope to release another, perhaps happier, video before the Christmas celebration. But until then, beware the fog, no star.